Ever wondered how your Netflix recommendations are so spot on? Well, it's not magic, nor is it purely coincidental. It's the power of data analysis at work. Data analysis is everywhere, subtly influencing the world around us. From the movies and series that pop up on your Netflix feed, to the weather forecasts that help us plan our day. It's a fascinating field that combines mathematics, statistics, and computer science to extract meaningful insights from raw data. One of the most powerful tools in this field is something called Generalized Linear Models, or GLMs for short. These models are used in machine learning to predict outcomes based on a set of input data. They're the secret sauce that makes our digital world smart, personalized, and incredibly efficient. But what exactly are generalized linear models? Let's demystify this concept. Simply put, generalized linear models or GLMs are a flexible generalization of ordinary linear regression models. To grasp the concept of GLMs, we need to first understand linear regression models. Think of linear regression as trying to draw a straight line through a scatter plot of data points. This line is the best fit that represents the relationship between the dependent and independent variables. It's a useful tool, but it has its limitations, particularly when it comes to dealing with non-normal distributions or binary or multi-level categorical outcomes. Enter GLMs, the versatile superheroes of the regression world, ready to tackle these challenges. GLMs expand on linear regression by allowing for response variables that have error distribution models other than a normal distribution. GLMs consist of three main components. First, there's the random component, which refers to the probability distribution of the response variable, such as normal, binomial, or Poisson distributions. The random component acknowledges that our data can be, well, random. Next up is the systematic component, which refers to the explanatory or independent variables. These components are systematically examined to see how they affect our response variable. Finally, we have the link function, the bridge that connects the random and systematic components. The link function describes how the expected value of the response relates to the linear predictors. Common examples are the identity link function, where the response variable is directly modeled by the predictors, and the logit link function, which is used when modeling binary data. So, GLMs allow us to model response variables that are binary, count data, positive continuous data, and more. They overcome the limitations of ordinary linear regression by being more flexible and accommodating. In essence, GLMs are like a Swiss army knife, offering a set of tools for various data scenarios. They're a powerful addition to any data analyst's toolbox, providing a robust method for modeling an array of data types. So GLMs are not as complicated as they seem, are they? But how do they work? A GLMs work by linking the mean of the dependent variable to the independent variables through the link function. This link function is the heart of a GLM, serving as the bridge between the dependent and independent variables. Think of it as a translator, taking the language of the dependent variable and converting it into a language the independent variables can understand. The link function molds the independent variables in a way that allows them to predict the mean of the dependent variable. It does this by transforming the dependent variable's mean, making it more amenable to linear regression. In essence, the link function is the conductor that orchestrates the relationship between all variables in a GLM, ensuring harmony and balance. By carefully controlling this relationship, it successfully predicts outcomes even when the data doesn't strictly follow the normal distribution. Now that we know how GLMs work, let's discuss why they are important. GLMs are essential in machine learning because they provide a robust method for relating one or more independent variables to a dependent variable. Now, why is this so important? Well, in machine learning, we often deal with real-world data, and let's be honest, real-world data is messy. It's not always neatly distributed along a bell curve. This is where GLMs come into play. They're not phased by data that doesn't fit the mold. They can handle data that is not normally distributed, making them quite the versatile tool. But wait, there's more. GLMs can also deal with categorical independent variables. That's right, they're not just limited to numerical data. So whether you're predicting house prices based on various factors, or trying to determine the likelihood of a patient having a particular disease based on symptoms, GLMs have got you covered. So next time you get a spot-on Netflix recommendation, remember, 
A generalized linear model might be working behind the scenes, 